Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game from the Top Chess Engine Championship Season 16. This was a round 6 game between Leela Chess 0 on the white end and Komodo MCTS, which stands for Monte Carlo Tree Search. The opening is a slow Slav or quiet Slav. I'd like to share right off the bat, if you're a King's Indian attack player, I think you'll enjoy this game. I think you'll enjoy this star idea from this game. It is not unlikely to see a similar idea applied in a King's Indian attack opening. I'll share what exactly I'm referring to towards the end. E3 is what denotes the slow Slav or quiet Slav. Play goes about in a bit of a non-confrontational way. Uh, not a lot of tension early on. It turns positional in nature. So light square bishops are now out. How to deal with the pin. White connects knights. So the queen is now free to move off the diagonal without fear of compromising the king's side structure. The knight is now there to recapture. Black does similar with the knights. More development for each side. And black with bishop h5 is preparing to exchange. Bad bishop for good bishop. More development, and now move 11, c5. You know, this move could have been played uh, for seven moves now. Why is now the time for c5? Well, for one, it attacks the bishop, so that's nice. It's going to have to react. And two, the bishop has to react and go to a square it's not a fan of. It only has e7. doesn't want to go back home, so it only has e7. And why is it not a fan of e7? Well, maybe the better question is, what square is it a fan of? It's a fan of the square c7, the one the black queen currently occupies. Let's go back one move. Suppose c5 is played before these two moves. How are things different? Why is it important to have the bishop on c7? Well, it supports an e5 pawn break. Now that c5 is in, there's no longer as much pressure on d5. It's a bit, uh, it's kind of overkill, we can say, on the black side. The type of support black has over d5, it's rock solid, and this e5 pawn can think more aggressively now that there's not as much pressure on d5. So it's optimally placed on c7 is what I'm getting at. And if black needs even more support for this break, there's queen c7. Timing, timing, timing. c5 only now flushes the bishop back to e7. Both of these pieces are not helping support e5 in this case. Okay, g3. When I first see g3, I think flight square. After I saw this game in full, I realized g3 is actually an aggressive move. Sounds a bit crazy, <laughs> but it's true. g3 is an aggressive move. Okay, a5, a3, castles b4. White would like to expand on the queen side some. This is where white has some space, so maybe getting a, a friend nearby with b5 at some stage is a way to go. Light square bishops exchanged. If you say A, you should say B. Okay, bishop C3 now, move 16. White would like to have this tension resolved. Uh, black is the one who currently benefits for as long as this tension is present. Black gets to decide when the A file opens up. That's a nice positive for black. Black at any, mo at any moment can take towards the center, and the A-file is peeled open. White, on the other hand, is never really ever threatening to take away from the center. Not only because the A-pawn would now have some pressure on it along the file, but there's less protection over C5, and you can slowly see Black begin to chip away at the white center with B6 and C5, and soon the white center can collapse. My point here, this tension wants to be, white wants to resolve the tension. It is resolved, 
And with that comes a new square, uh, a, a home, I should say, is now available for a black knight. B5 is a hole without the A pawn around. So black has an idea to get a knight there. King G2. What is this aggressive idea? We're still seeing it in action with G3, King G2. Knight E8, Rook B1, Queen C8, H4. White has this pawn break in mind. White is looking to attack the black king. Knight C7. Yeah, another thing to note here is, you know, after this capture on G6, this pawn is a bit more accessible to the white pieces. It's only going to take two tempi before white is engaging with this pawn. And white will find it a little bit easier now to peel open, or at least threaten to peel open uh, the h-file to try and attack the black king. Okay, h4, knight c7, rook h1. So this was the point. This was the, the aggressive idea behind g3, king g2. It's to put the rook on the h-file and get in a position to play h5. White is now just a move away from uh, playing that. But there are some threats to deal with. Right here, there's a fork threatened. So I might as well throw a pop quiz your way. Uh, in this game, the white rook moves to react to this threat. Where do you think the rook goes? Feel free to pause the video. Where would you go with this rook? Okay, in the game, rook e1. All the files are closed. Okay, the only open file is the A files, but why the E file of all files? While closed, we could say that the E file is closed, but we can also say that the E file is the one that has at least some potential to open. E4 is an additional pawn break in the position. E E4 and H5 are the two key pawn breaks here. Also, it's x-raying an unprotected bishop. Okay, knight a3, queen backs off, knight b5, e4 on board. Okay, this was the first moment I thought to myself, well, you made all of these prep moves, white, you made these prep moves, g3, king g2, rook h1, why is h5 now not played? Let's have a look. Again, in the game e4, was played. What about h5? Wasn't this the idea all along? Well, here's the issue. h5 can be met with g5. Suppose white tries again to exchange off these pawns. Gets met with g6. h7? The king hides. And this white pawn is a very good defender for black. How are you getting at the black king? He hides behind this guy. He's shielded by a white pawn. Now is not the time for h5. e4 in this case, threatening to take and get at the bishop. So the bishop is defended. Queen c2, knight a3, queen d3. The queen has slightly improved. This knight is doing a lot of shuffling. If the knight is on a3, uh, this rook, there's never any fear of the rook being activated. So falls back, bishop b2, knight c7, bishop c1. White is waiting for this capture. You know, if this capture is played, there's some a bit of a trade-off happening here, and it's one that benefits white more than black. Um, white recaptures with the knight, for sure, promotes this second-ranked knight. The bishop can now see two pieces, at least, are helped for white, whereas only one is helped for black. Black has this square to work with, but to free both white minor pieces like this is not a wise choice for black. Now you can really start to see the white pieces interacting well on the g5 square. That's a big intersection square for white. Okay, in this game we have b6, trying to justify this earlier rook f to b8. Trying to open up the B file now. 
e5. We see this time and time again. This e5 advance. Um, it's really cool to see how this move sets up this wonderful idea in this game. Some space. Some control over d6. f6 now. Knight a6. Bishop a3. Defending b4. A little back and forth. And now rook a4. This is where white goes in for the attack. There is no defending uh, this pawn anymore. White pursues an attack against the king. Moves towards the king's side. Knight g5. And from here we have a capture on c5. A move I questioned is, well, suppose black is a little bit greedy and picks up the b4 pawn. Uh, how might play continue from here? Well, uh, white can play knight to f3. And next be in a position to play h5. Uh, I didn't point it out yet, but when this knight plays to uh, g5, what is it doing? Uh, it is attacking some squares, of course, in black's position. You might also say it is preventing black from trying to lock up the king's side. So in other words, let's say if if black tries to play f5, um, well, there's no guarantee it would be locked up on the king's side. But if f5 is ever played, white can do what? White can capture and have this pressure on e6 all of a sudden. This will soon become a sensitive point on e6. Knight e5 in addition to attacking squares, is fixing this pawn on g6. How, why is this important? The, that earlier variation I showed with h5, it was able to be met with g5, but not here. With the g6 pawn fixed, when h5 is in, the h-file will, by force, be peeled open one way or the other. White will either take black, Black will either take white, the h-file will open up. The white rooks will have activity. Okay, so knight g5 attacks some squares, fixes the g6 pun. Not the natural thing to really see when the knight jumps into that square, but it is fixing g6 for an h5 advance. Black captures on c5 in this position, so... If rook takes b4, we would have knight to f3, and h5 is nearby. Notice the queen and knight are uh, coordinated on h7, however indirect that is. There are mating ideas uh, connected with h5 after a capture, queen h7, nearing. We have a capture on c5 in this game. White takes towards the center. Black is doubling up. On the d-pawn, knight f3, bishop takes knight, white takes with the pawn. The h-file is now opened up. If you're not capturing the knight, you know, there are these ideas, again, to play h5 and circle in one way or the other, open up the h-file by force. So the knight is taken out, white takes with the pawn, so this rook is happy, and the white, uh, the black queen needs to bolt, like right now. This king has to run, make a run for the e7 square. Uh, so for example, if the black queen doesn't move here and plays knight to b5, white can play rook h4, and then double up, and it's too late. You can stop mate. Black can stop mate, but you're going to lose the queen. My point here. She needs to go. Now. Queen a8. Queen e3. Queen a6. Queen f4. King f8 making a run for it. And now a big moment in the game. Pop quiz here. What is this star idea in this game? What are, what are the next couple, well, let's say next two or three moves that white has up their sleeve? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, you ready for this? We have rook h8, king e7, and now queen f6. 
How beautiful is this move? Uh, we have two pawns right here supporting a piece on the f6 square. I've seen positions where a knight would jump in there, uh, but I have never seen until uh, viewing this game a queen jumping into this f6 square. It's a, it's a killer move. Uh, you have to take the queen, of course. Uh, black, in fact, has to take on f6 on these next two moves. And it doesn't really matter in what order uh, black does it with the knight or the pawn. Plays knight takes queen. White takes away from the center, opening up the square for the knight. Black in this in this position only has two legal moves to take the pawn or go here. If you go here, how's that for a finish? That's checkmate. So black captures with the pawn. Pawn takes. Same story. Have to take the pawn here. Bishop g5. King g7. What other choice is there? If the king went up, check. And checkmate. So the king has to go to g7. And now after rook e to h1, there is only one way to stop rook 1 to h7 for mate. And that is to give material away. At the moment, black has a queen and pawn versus bishop, but mate is nearby, and the only way to stop it is by giving away a queen in full, queen f1, distracting either the rook or the king. If you take with the king, black can get one of the rooks off, like so. In this game, we have rook takes queen, and that's it. Um, the game goes on for nearly 20 more moves, but this one's over. White is now playing up material, a bishop versus a pawn, and uh, there's no defense. It was just a, <laughs> this winning idea, this little clamp over the f6 square with the queen dropping in there was a killer. So just showing the final moves here. If... Black doesn't give up this pawn. White can clamp down on these guys. The bishop can circle in. A lot of different approaches at this stage. White is now up a full piece and a pawn. And we get to what point exactly before this game is over. Right here is where the game is terminated. White ends up winning. If it did continue, White can generate a mate threat. Uh, how exactly to defend it? I'll just show one variation. If the king steps up, the white king can step up, renewing this mate threat. And, okay, black is once more in a position to... Uh, black would have to give up some more material just to stop the mate threats. So, like, a check, and then stuff like this. And, of course, this is still winning for white. But this right here is as far as it got. After king to h6, game is over white wins but what a star idea that is with the queen dropping in to the f6 square uh, when i saw this idea i was reminded of like i introduced uh, this game I, I i referred to the king's indian attack uh, i'd like to bring up a position out of the king's indian attack this position right here this one, if you're a King's Indian attack player, uh, this position is one you know as well as, well as the back of your hand. Uh, how might we have a similar idea surface? Well, while not the most common move in this position, there is this idea to play bishop to g5, and should, should this bishop be captured, you can start to see uh, this idea to take with the pawn, have a clamp over f6, and not the queen, but rather a knight jumping into f6. If we saw a queen work, we can certainly see scenarios where a knight dropping into that f6 square can be a great bother, this position being one of them. This is a moment where the knight can simply drop in to f6. I'm not going to go any further, 
those of you who would like to look at this, um, feel free to do that. This is this is already busted for black. Just wanted to show you, out of a King's Indian attack formation, a pawn is already on e5 very early on, you can see these ideas. Queen on f6 in this game, King's Indian attack, I don't know, maybe in some scenarios you can still put drop a queen on f6, but again, a knight on f6 in this case, uh, you can see surface, and it can be quite effective. A knight on f6, or a white pawn on f6, I think this guy is at, is worth at least a pawn in many cases, and this is this is one of those cases. Anyhow, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it, and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.